Hello dear guys and girls, welcome back. I'm Petra. Um, I'd just like to say thank you to all the new subscribers who have joined us in the past couple of weeks and days and also a thank you to the subscribers who continue to support this channel. Today I wanted to speak on um, the mind game of the narcissist. Now, as we all know, of course, the narcissist plays several uh, mind games, but um, the way I see it is um, their biggest mind uh, game is control. That is the umbrella. And underneath that umbrella, there is the intimidation, manipulation, gaslighting, uh, projection, triangulation, so all these different terms fall under that umbrella of control. That is all they want to do. So when you have an emotional connection to someone, um, you feel uh, enmeshed with them, you feel that, that there is a togetherness, and this is why when we have uh, broken away from the narcissist, when they have discarded us or when we have discarded them, we go through all this emotional pain and we feel that we will never be able to get over this because it is so painful. But the thing is, you know, if you look at the definition of, uh, of emotional connection, it's when two or more people perceive the same thing at the same time. Now this may be true for you and I, for those of us who are emotionally intelligent, for those of us who have um, the great value of feeling and uh, being able to show love uh, and empathy and compassion, all these wonderful traits. That is what we genuinely feel. But a narcissist does not genu genuinely feel these emotions. And that is why they do not have that emotional connection to us. We are the only ones who have it. And that is why we also go through the grieving and the pain. And it takes us so long to get over a, a relationship or a friendship uh, with a narcissist. They, on the other hand, uh, just move on. You know, they may be angered, they may be bitter, they might show you fake sadness when the relationship has just been ended, but they always move on very quickly. Whether that is within a week or in a few months, they will just move on and act as if nothing is wrong. Now, this is the reason why. It is because they are void. You know, if you just look at it from... Um, just if you put yourselves in their shoes for a minute, there is no way they do not have that, um, that, those real emotions. They have anger, they have fear, they have very low self-esteem, which is why they always play the victim. Um, but they are not capable of truly feeling those emotions. So when you cannot truly feel that is when you go through life and go through the world wanting to control the other person um, because it gives them a sense of, um, of course, being in control and it also gives them a sense of being normal. So they use you to make themselves feel normal. This is when we speak of the, um, you know, uh, them uh, being like vampire, uh, vampires, energy vampires. They suck the energy out of you. They control your emotions. They control your thoughts, control your mind and remove from you all those great values that they themselves are missing. And this is why they need you and I in order to feel normal and alive. That is really the bottom line in a nutshell, of course, because there is so much to be said about this. So they control your mind by gaslighting, by lying to you, by projecting onto you. This is why you think or you, this is what you perceive is them being normal because they have exactly the same emotions. They say the, the right things. They say the things that you and I would say. They act uh, the same way. And this is why you feel that they are normal and why you also, you and I have such a difficult time 
getting over the discard. And this is, this is their way, you know, by lying and manipulating and intimidating and projecting, this is their way of having control of your thoughts and of your mind. And that is why also after breakup, you will have all these thoughts that just continue to, to, to you know, to um, flow into your mind and then flow out and flow back. And it's, it's all a jumble. You are having this terrible conflict with yourself because you think about what they said and about what they did and you try to match that up because in your mind it is normal, but your emotions are telling you something else. So again, cognitive dissonance where you are uh, being um, presented with two conflicting beliefs. This is their whole intention. This is what a narcissist does, is to really mess up your mind, scramble up your mind in order to have that control over you. And that is why it is so important. I've, I've said it so many times and I continue to say it. If you are looking to heal, it is absolutely imperative that you break off all contact because this is the reason you know when you have not emotionally detached from the narcissist even if the relationship is has ended so that you are not physically in contact with each other um, they can still control you from a distance this is because they are still in your mind they are still you know like that snake that i once explained in a video where they they like surgeons they go into your mind they make an incision they go in and they they weave their tentacles around your mind space so even from a distance they still have that control over you and that is why it is so important to go absolute no contact um you know if at all possible of course um no answering your phone no answering emails or messages if you don't have to this is how you are going to get yourself back into a normal state. Yes, it takes a long time, you know, for, for some people, maybe 10 years on from the relationship and you still struggle with this. But that is when you need help getting through this, because oftentimes we cannot do it on our own. We need the support. We need the love and compassion from those around us, those of us who, you know, those who get you, who understand you. You need to, to have assistance going through that because it can be very difficult to do it on your own, especially when you don't speak about all that you have been through. Um, you, you don't get to, to listen, really listen to the words that you were saying, listen to the story that you were telling. And this is why it is all kept in your mind and you have a difficult time working through that or processing that. So always seek therapy or coaching or counseling when dealing uh, with the aftermath of narcissistic abuse. So the narcissist will never self-reflect. They are not capable of doing this. Um, they, instead of self-reflecting, they, they, they self-deflect. So everything is pushed onto you. Um, every conflict um, they they throw back into your face. It is your fault, of course. There is a lot of blame and shame and guilt involved there. And this is simply because they do not want to take responsibility for their actions, for their words, for the way they make you feel, for what they do to you. So it's always self-deflection and never self-reflection. Um, the whole relationship with the narcissist is a game. It, this is their whole intent they play games with people they play mind games with people and the sad thing is when we are in the middle of these relationships we simply do not realize that we are playing a game they know it they know that they can manipulate and intimidate you you are like a puppet on a string they realize this and this is what gives them their fuel this is what they enjoy and we do not realize that we are being played. And this is why uh, they have total control. So because you do not realize that you are in a game, you make up excuses for their bad behavior. You tell others around you, oh, you know, they were having a bad day. They're having a stressful time at work. They've had a very bad childhood. They are traumatized. 
So we always give them the benefit of the doubt. And this is why even sometimes, you know, when the narcissist has discarded you and then at some point they find it necessary to hoover you again and you go back with the hope that things will be different, that things will have changed. Um, we always give them the benefit of the doubt. And sometimes you go back three, four, five, what, even ten times, you may go back into the relationship. But the best gift you can give yourself, even though it is excruciatingly painful, is to go no contact and stay no contact. And if you have to be in contact because of the, the children that you have together, then just be very uh, on topic, stay on topic. Do not give personal information. Do not talk about yourself. Do not ask them how they are doing. So just keep your conversation on topic. The narcissist has, um, has their fake emotions down to a fine art, very fine art. They know which buttons to press when they see you responding in a certain way. They know exactly what to do in order to get you to respond in a different way. And they play on your heart space. They play on your true understanding, your love. These are the very, you know, as I said earlier, these are the emotions that they play on. And these are the emotions that they take advantage of. So... Another reason why when um, you have to speak after the discard, um, perhaps because it is a parent or because you have children with them, then um, it is always good to keep your emotions in check. Do not give them any emotional fuel because this is what they thrive on. This is what they are looking for. So keep those emotions in check. And don't forget that the narcissist has put a full-blown attack on you psychologically and emotionally and stop beating yourself up about the fact that you cannot seem to heal quick enough now why should there be a deadline on healing you have been through an emotional marathon you have been attacked as i just said psychologically emotionally physically, sadly enough. And when you have been under that, um, that level of attack, it takes time to heal. It takes time to get things sorted out in your mind, to regain your own thought pattern and not be that puppet under their, their uh, scrutiny, their control, where they are really moving your emotions and your thoughts around that is when you have to start taking back those thoughts because everything begins in your mind with your thought. So whatever you think is what you are going to feel is how you are going to respond or react. It is all connected. But the birthing ground for our, for our actions and our responses start in the mind. It starts with a single thought. So it is very important that during your healing process, you start to regain your own thoughts. You um, take ownership of your belief system and how you are thinking, the conversations you are having with yourself. These are so important in order for you to heal. Um, so what the narcissist does, because they have total control, they pull you into their defective world and um, it's it's really it's a make-believe world world it's a fantasy world that you have been um, pulled into and where you have been living for however long the relationship has lasted months or years you know and that is why it is so we feel that we are so disconnected after the discard we 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 seem to not be able to get a grip on reality and this is because you have been living in a fantasy all this time. So you need to come back and ground yourself. Come back to earth and ground yourself. That is why meditation is so important when going through the healing. Uh, especially grounding meditations to ground yourself in yourself. And just be trusting of yourself as well. Because everything, the way you heal, 
is also based on trust. You need to trust that you will heal as long as you do your inner work. So I hope that um, that has helped you some. You know, it is a very, it's a very trying, very sad time that we go through when, when healing and when coming to grips with the, uh, the attack we were under, how our mind was in, con in total control. We had no uh, control anymore over that, over our actions, over how we were feeling, over our emotions. But just know that you can get back to that because no one has the right to manipulate your emotions and manipulate your thoughts to that level. It is just, it is not right. So take every step that you need to take in order to secure yourself and do not allow these people back into your life. Stay no contact and take back control of your own life. Thank you once again for watching. Please keep those emails coming. Again, I apologize if I uh, don't reply very quickly. It's just that, you know, there are so many uh, emails that come in. Um, so please bear with me and know that I will get back to you. Again, I say this every single time, but you know, there are just new emails coming in every single week or every single day. So please bear with me. Share your story down here in the comment section below and uh, just keep this community going where you share your stories, where you give feedback to others and just keep that warmth and that compassion going. Thanks again. Speak to you all very soon. Bye for now.